Uh, this one's a year ago. I have a bit of lore. Like, I know quite a bit from Daddy05 watching these two. So, let's watch. No, that one's 44 minutes. 41. I'm dyslexic. Um, mm, I don't want to watch one that's too long. Do y'all want to watch the Sunny V2 video? I think we could watch that one. I don't mind watching it again. This was two years ago, by the way. I don't remember anything. From losing custody of their children Whoa. over a prank to having their entire channel deleted by YouTube, this is the tragic tale of YouTube's most controversial family channel, Daddy05. It was created on the 13th of August, 2015 by parents Mike and Heather with the goal of pranking their five children for views, stating that Crazy they always is, thought- Don't charge my head and not my heart on this one. I didn't know they had more than three kids i thought it, i thought it was like three one old one one th the little kid cody i think his name and then the little girl who they said they don't prank her because she she doesn't give them reactions so i thought it was just those three and then the other five were the mom and the dad a daddy oh five of course he's daddy to himself but their lives would make an awesome movie and that they as a family decided to make this YouTube channel just for fun and in the beginning it was exactly that it was fun when looking at their earlier pranks such as this one in which Mike would try to scare his daughter with a hockey mask we can see that most of the pranks were fairly harmless in the beginning whenever they weren't playing pranks Mike was maybe doing a grocery store run an exercise vlog or possibly even firing up the barbecue which wasn't all that provocative to say the least however as daddy 5 approached a hundred thousand subscribers fueled by their fun family dynamic, things began to change on their channel. Mike seemed to come to the realization that the more intense the reaction from the prank, the more views so he I was thinking recently, I was thinking, family channels, like they, they just rule over YouTube and TikTok, right? We need to watch a video on D Double Chunk Chocolate Cookie and Big AJ, Big AJ and Big Justice. I love those dudes so much. They are, they, they make my, they, they just make me feel good. Like, they don't do anything in particular either. They just, they, they just give me good vibes, you know, and I, I just need that. I, it's, of course we walk around eating the chicken bake and I'm the wrestler. Double chunk chocolate cookie. I, like, you, <laughs> I, I love that. I love the game. I love the game. Fault me for it receive, resulting in him encouraging his kids to try and get whoever they were pranking as angry as possible. And keep it going. Get her as mad as she could possibly get her. I'll end it. When it goes too far, I'll end it. But let's see how mad you can get. As a result of this being the goal, Mike would then realize that not every child in the family would give an equally strong reaction. For example, their daughter Emma would barely react to even the most brutal of pranks. Why are you kissing boys at school? I'm not kissing no one. Yes, you did. Yes, you did. They both said they saw you. Leading Mike to conclude that she wasn't worth pranking in the first place. Well, I'll tell you why we don't never prank Emma. It's simply because Emma cannot be pranked. When we do prank her, she has like no reaction to it. There's zero reaction. On the I feel like she's the only one with common sense in the house, you know? Like, she's the only one, like, yo, my family, it, it's a bunch of nut jobs. Like, these people are are crazy so why would i feed into that if i was on a family channel i think my life would be up here but simultaneously down here i don't think my parents have enough like enough of the nonsense gene in them to you know start a family channel you know like they're too they're too by the books they're too uh like yo you need to follow all these rules or else we're going to murder you simple as that so i don't think i would ever experience that what i want to though i think as a kid i was pretty materialistic so the thought of having anything i wanted if i just had to go through like a couple of pranks or something really enticing i'm not very very enticing but um yeah i i do feel bad for some of these kids because it's like you'll never have a normal childhood like you'll never experience what i went through you know and i here's another thing sorry I'm, I'm just talking people will tell me about like their childhoods and people will be like oh yeah this happened to me and 
Like, man, it sucked. I'm just sitting there like, yo, that's like, it's so crazy to me to think how different my childhood was from somebody else's. Like, it's just so mind boggling. Like, it's, it's like, of course, I have sympathy. Like, I not sympathy, empathy. I can empathize with what you're going through. Right. But it's like, man, I wonder how I would react in a situation like that. Like, I don't know. It, it's just, it's just crazy, crazy to think about. And then I think, like, how I live my life is like a direct, like, consequence on how I spent my childhood. And that's the same thing for other people, but it looks so much different. Sorry, I, I'm, I'm a grown man, but I'm just finding out about different perspectives. That's, that's it. Sorry end of the spectrum there was cody who would basically have an emotional meltdown every single time he was pranked it's just a prank so you all made me go all through all this just for a stupid prank cody had been sorry, diagnosed sorry, sorry. i don't mean to laugh at him i don't mean to laugh at him but I, I get it i get it i get it i understand like it it's drawling when a prank is drawling it's drawling i remember this one time i was at squash here i I'm just talking. I'm just talking at this point. This is this is what I love to do. I love I, I love the game. So I remember I was at a squash a squash overnight camp, right? And it was at the Lemfest Center in North Philly. So I I spent the night there and I got my sleeping bag and I got a stuffed animal in that bag, right? And I'm just tweaking. I wasn't tweaking. I I've never been the type of person to like sleeping with other people like in a huge room. So like camping no go. I would not like the camp. Um, like situations like that, like the squash camp, I was so on edge. I was so on edge that I just, I could barely sleep. So once I finally did go to sleep, they did a prank on me. Cause I, I don't even think I was up like late. Right. Um, so I remember waking up. I feel water on my face. They had a bottle that, that looks provocative. Sorry. But it's a Please don't clip that. But I was like, yo, it, it brought me to tears. It brought, I, I think it was in the fifth grade, but I was like, yo, I never want to do this again. I hate this. I hate this. And so now, like when we go on trips, like us as a friend group, right? I have this little uneasiness to me knowing that I'm sleeping in a room with people I'm familiar with, people I know personally, people that I consider very close to my heart, right? But it's just a matter of like, yo, what if something happens while I'm asleep? What if something happens in the middle of sleep? <laughs> you think we're gonna kill you, Vic? If I say the, if I say the wrong thing, who, who knows what you're gonna do to me? Who you're heavy-handed? So what? You could just boom. In my sleep, I'm sitting there, and, and I'm in a coma for the rest of my life. That's what I'm scared of. Okay, whatever. Um, but yeah, like, of course, I'm comfortable sleeping with y'all. I wouldn't have gone if I wasn't comfortable. But it's just, like, that that uneasiness, you know? Sounds like, okay, I'm going to shoot you. I'm going to shoot you. Let me show y'all something. Let me show y'all something. Let me show y'all something before he starts... Hold on, I gotta find a video. It was real recent too. Lil bro was gritty. Lil bro was gritty to hit the to hit the thing to to hit the punching bag. And I'm taking threats from this guy. <laughs> what? Come on, man. The oppositional defiant disorder, characterized by symptoms such as often and easily loses temper, is frequently touchy and easily annoyed by others, is often angry and resentful, which was accentuated by the parents reinforcing to Cody's face that he was what you might call a problem child, after mentioning that teachers should get a raise just for having to put up with him. These teachers need a damn raise. They do. 
especially dealing with this one. I really feel teachers ought to be getting paid a lot more than they get paid. Cody Short Fuse therefore made him the main target whenever Mike wanted to get a reaction for the camera. Me and Jake just did a prank on Cody and now I feel really, really, really bad about it. And since the most intense reactions generated the most views, Cody was often pushed well beyond crying, during which Mike would even refuse to turn off the camera after Cody had asked him to do so. Go and kiss the camera with you. No! I gotta vlog my life. I in the you know that. Spotting a trend in the way that the parents treated Cody and their other kids, Reddit began to get vocal about the Daddy05 channel. These kids need to be taken away and have their time with their parents supervised, at least for a period of time. Cody for sure needs to be taken away from that house for good, and he needs to know that he was right. This is awful. I feel so bad for Cody. This is unwatchable, and this guy should be in jail. Honestly, I could never in a million years imagine treating my kids like this. It didn't help that Mike took next to no responsibility for what you might call his unacceptable behavior. For example, as shown in the previous clip where he mentioned feeling bad for a prank he had played on Cody, he'd justify it by stating that everyone else had told him to do it. Everybody talked me into doing it. Everybody said it would be hilarious. The mother in the family, Heather, who was actually a stepmother, didn't seem to care for Cody much either. In addition to stating that teachers deserved a raise for having to put up with him, a Reddit comment would highlight that she said, I love you, but I don't like you to Cody, although the original episode has since been deleted. So while this is impossible to verify as true, it certainly sounds like something she would say, as in another video, Heather would state that she was glad Cody wasn't coming to Disneyland with the family, as he was simply going to make everyone miserable. I don't want to take- I said something like that at work one time, and it, I caught myself after the fact, like, yo, why would you say that that was rude, right? I'm not going to say the little girl's name, but um, she she was in a group this year, and I was, this is when I first started, very, very first start my first year, and I remember she said something to me, she, she said something real strange to me, and it took me back. I was like, yo, I don't like y'all like that for you to be doing this. And then it clicked because her her first thought, she was like, Mr. Ranson, you don't like us. It's like, no, I don't mean that. I, I, I'm i just not. I'm not comfortable around y'all like that. Y'all are other people's kids to me at that point, you know. So it was like, it, I don't know. I felt kind of bad, you know, it was like, man. You really, you really did that. You really hurt a kid's feelings today. Why would you, why would you do that? I don't know. Ugh, just a thought. Now that, that kid is gone and I don't think they've learned anything between now and, or then in middle school. So, um, th there's that. Um, but yeah, I, I felt bad and you, if somebody says, oh, I love you or, oh, I, um, Oh, we really like you. Just, just say it back. Just, just, just say it back. Even if you don't mean it, you know. Um, I remember. I just keep talking. I see what y'all are talking about now. Where I just, I just go on tangents, and that's why, that's why the bods end up being so long. Cause I, I just. So, this is one time, I was out with my ex girlfriend, um, the, the the other one, the one before, right, and we were out. We were in. JC Penny or Macy's whichever one is downtown right we were on the mattress floor and I remember walking I remember this distinctly and I, I feel so bad about it I feel very 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 bad about this um we, just, we were holding hands and we were walking and we, this was like um, at a point where we were like off and on so like this is back when we were on but it was like real fresh and I, I was just kind of there and she looked over to me with hand hand in my hand. It's like, yo, I love you. And I took a pause. I took a pause. I was like, yo. How how do I respond to that? Cause I I didn't feel the same at the time. I didn't, I'll be honest. And it, it scared me because I felt my heart boom drop straight to my buttocks. And I, I just I, I uttered it out to her and I, I said it and it was like yo that was terrible that was ter don't ever do that again it felt it felt so uh, just thinking about it uh gives me the bjbs mm, let me continue this video because he's bad at shit and he's gonna make everyone miserable the whole time normal kids have bad behaviors 
Cody has something I'm telling the people to lie I, in the moment because everything ended up working out everything worked out just fine so like we we don't talk I don't talk to her anymore I haven't talked to her in years um but everything I'm not telling people to lie if you really don't feel the way you do you should just be honest and straightforward with how you feel right but it gets to a point where you are so so far down the deep end which I was because we were out we were out doing stuff um I think we went out to lunch or something I don't know but we were just walking around so I was so far down the deep end I I, I locked myself into that position but I'm not saying lie. I am not saying lie. Right? So, my final advice here, if you ever find yourself in a situation like that, just tell them straight up. Don't make the, don't make the same mistake I did. That's it. That's all I got. Else. The reason Cody wasn't allowed to come to Disneyland was that after going to the toilet, he had quote, put poop everywhere. Cody's going to Nans because Cody was bad and didn't earn going to Disney, which sucks. He put poop everywhere several times. Which would be investigated. Was, yo, I came into the bathroom several times at Wildwood right after Vic. It was just poop all over the walls, all over the toilet. I'm like, yo, Vic, clean up, clean up, clean up your shit. And she was just like, no. Because <laughs> she was sick the whole time. Vic was sick. Uh, I hate liars like you. I would never lie. Um, <laughs> and I, I was just like, yo, this is disgusting. Yo, Vic, when I tell you, I'm not lying about this. I'm not lying about this when I tell you. I came home. I came home. And I think it was either in my shoe or in my sock. One of the two. I'm... Days have this happened like yesterday or the day before. You know what I see? I see a long red strand of hair in my foot compartment. I'm like, yo. And it wasn't even like a pair of shoes that I took to, to Wildwood. It was in my gym shoes. So I'm like, how did this get here? It wasn't you. Vic, you're the only person I know with red hair right now. It, you're the only person. That was you. And then when we were at actual, like, Wildwood, I pulled the hair out my side. I'm like, yo, should I crack her now or should I crack her later? Because all of Vic's shed is getting getting on my body, and now I'm starting to itch. So wh what's the problem? I found one in my, oh, yeah, I remember him saying that. She be shedding 24-7. <laughs> By another large YouTuber known as Philip DeFranco, who would come to discover the following information. Philip DeFranco came out with a video today um, talking about Cody not going to Disneyland. Apparently, the reason why he wasn't going is because he, you know, put feces everywhere or something like that. He talked to mental health experts and they said, you know, this could be a sign of trauma. What do you say to that? Why, why, why do you think Cody did this? Daddy05 would go on to clarify this by stating that the toilet had simply overflowed. There is no feces on the wall. What happened was the toilet overflowed. Like, I mean, it happens with five kids in the house. And right. It, it, oh the toilet God. overflowed. So I said that instead of saying the real issue why he didn't go to Disneyland, which he was really embarrassed about and he doesn't want anyone to know. Yet this response only created just thinking about thinking about work right i i will never unclog a toilet unless it's my own feces i will never ever ever do that oh my gosh because i was about to say this little boy at work he decided every day at the same time to destroy the bathroom to to leave a nuclear um uh I don't even have the word for it. I just remember having, he he would come out. First of all, he would go in holding his stomach. It's like, DJ, relax. Relax. Capiche. And then he would come out. He would hit the same pose every time. Uh, Mr. Ranson, I think it's a problem in there. I, I, I think the toilet won't fl Oh, my gosh. So I go in there, I go in there like this, 
and I don't even touch the handles with my hands. My hands are too good for that. These are for these are for editing. I don't I don't touch other people's feces. So I go in there, put. Hold on, let me demonstrate. I go in there, and I hit one of these. And it's just the toilets in there don't they don't go down all the way on the first time. So I'm just seeing. I'm just. It's a swirling, swirling, swirling until the third flush finally goes down. And I'm just sitting there with this little boy's poop. I'm standing in the vicinity of this little boy's poop. And he's just sitting there. It's like, yo. Like, what? Oh, my gosh. Like, it's, it's not that I didn't, that I didn't like DJ. I feel like I gave off that vibe. I DJ was fine. He he was just a kid, just a, an uptight kid. I understand that. I was like that when I was younger. But it was just it it was he got me up to here. He got me up to here and that's I have no words for it. I really don't. Um I will never be going back to that school ever again. Especially with that bathroom situation. Created more questions. Why would you ban a kid from going to Disneyland for simply making the toilet overflow? Would it not be more embarrassing to say that he put poop on the wall in comparison to the reality being that the toilet had simply been clogged? You say that you didn't want to share something because you didn't want to embarrass your son. But you put out a video where you claimed that your child, who potentially his friends watch these videos, you put out a video that he's putting poop around his house as if that's not embarrassing. And then you tell a story about how a toilet overflowed and that you can't talk about the real reason because it's embarrassing. Philip DeFranco and Keemstar covering the story led to countless other YouTubers publicizing their opinion about Daddy 5 being unacceptable. For example, a video titled How Daddy 5 Ruined His Childhood would go viral on Reddit with close to 17,000 upvotes, alongside another Reddit thread with 3,000 upvotes, in which many comments mentioned that the case had been reported to Child Protective Services. However, this had actually been brought up in the interview with Keemstar, where Daddy 5 mentioned that they had already been investigated by Child Protective Services, who requested that they change a few things within the videos, yet found nothing Nothing wrong with the way that the family was being run. CPS, uh, you said, is uh, interviewing the family or investigating the family. Uh, has that case been closed or is it still opened? No, it's been closed and that was a while back. We have changed up everything that they said that we needed to. When I say that video is real, hold on. Hey now, you're a Keemstar. Get your hat on, MLG. Now you're a game star. All we care about is news. Hold on. Oh, I can't hear it. I I hope you guys can hear it. I hope you guys can hear it. I can't hear it. I was about to say, what is that? I'm not sure if I can show it on stream. Hold on, let me let me go back to. Okay. Um, let me lose Chrome. All right. Change. But they interviewed the kids pri privately, and you know the case was closed because there's nothing to find. There was nothing for them to see, and they realized that. And they did say that some of our videos were distasteful, which I can agree. I mean, some right. of them are. Although all of this would change after Daddy O Five would upload their most brutal video to date. It was crueler and more emotionally charged than anything they had done in the past. It would completely destroy their reputation, and it went by the now infamous title. Invisible Ink Prank Epic Freakout. The video began with the mother explaining that she planned on pranking Cody by pouring invisible ink on the carpet. I got a prank for Cody. I bought this here, invisible ink, and I'm going to squirt it all over his carpet and start flipping out because he really didn't do it. Um, so we're going to see how this goes. In the clip, like, is that really a prank though? Like, is that really funny? Like, blaming something on somebody even though they didn't do it like that's just unnecessary stress a prank a harmless prank to me is um i've seen a lot of harmless pranks on tiktok and people label them as harmless pranks and then people just go around calling each other the r word or something or um ah, perfect harmless prank perfect harmless prank um i'm about to reenact it i'm about to reenact it the the guy who who goes in the stores? I'm about to 
Watch this. So pretend, pretend somebody's right here. They'll come in. So they, they just ordering, they ordering. Yo, pop, let me get a bacon egg and cheese, yo. And he, he flips. Ah! That's me doing a flip. And they turn. And then, mind you, he, he just going back. He just, just trying to get some chips. And then they go back. And he, ah! And then he, they, they. They start getting angry. Yo, what are you, what are you doing, yo? <laughs> and mind you, he's he's just flipping and screaming <laughs> in the um in the poppy store. I love those videos. I love those videos so much. Cause it's like, what are you getting so pressed for? What are you what are you getting angry for? <laughs> he he's just here for the business. Oh my gosh. Her body language and tone of voice implies that it was going to be another fun, happy stunt, although when they do confront Cody about it, to say that they went overboard would certainly be an understatement. What the hell is, this? is that? What is this? Cody! You me. I didn't do that! You tell me what you did! And they just actually yelling at him. Like, that, that ugh. That's scary. Oh my god, I didn't do that! Cody! I didn't call her at my apartment! I didn't do that! Why did you do that? Pretty quickly, all of the kids are crying whilst the mother is outside the room having a bit of a giggle. And when they do eventually reveal that it was a prank, the kids don't seem all that excited. We got you, both. They were. You were innocent bystander. Yeah. She just read. She just read and laughing like that. That would make me angry. That would tip me over the edge if I was younger. If this happened to me. <laughs> You just got owned. <laughs> it's just a prank, bruh. The video would go on to receive a ton of backlash alongside a like ratio of less than 50%, leading Philip DeFranco to once again discuss the family, bringing widespread attention to the video. And so there was a range of anger. Some people saying this is outright abuse of your children. Others saying this is not abuse, but these are asshole parents that are exploiting their children for money and hurting them emotionally. And then it also appears that they have a dedicated audience that are completely fine with this. After a bunch of other YouTubers would go on to make their own videos discussing the prank, Daddy05 would respond with a video simply titled Blocking All the Haters, in which they would acknowledge the criticism. I'm getting all kinds of hate right now on all my social medias and on one of my videos called The Invisible Ink Prank. Following this, they'd go on to ask Cody and Alex if they had been traumatized by the prank. The prank was done on Alex and Cody. Was anybody traumatized? No! Are you guys okay? Yeah. yeah. Are you upset? It's just a prank. You know who Cody? You know who Cody reminds me of? Malik. He he just gives gives off that vibe of like he he's just here. Like he he only answers things after somebody else has answered them for him. I oh my gosh, Malik is so, I, I'm gonna miss that dude if he doesn't come back. Like he is. Th that's the same person. That that's the same person. You, mother would go on to state that the real problem was the haters. To all you haters, you are the ones that give our children drama. You are the one that cause us problems. You are the one that try to embarrass us. However, this video only seemed to bring more attention to the original prank, leading more YouTubers to talk about it. After a couple of days had passed, Daddy05 would cave in by uploading an apology video. Right now we are under severe attack by all kinds of media, by this uh, Franco guy. He made a video about about us just steamrolling us he never contacted me or anything and everyone is jumping on this hate wagon everyone is jumping on this this witch hunt in which they would try and convince the audience that all the pranks had been fake I don't care anymore. videos are fake they're fake they're over exaggerated some videos are scripted some video I mean they're just played out the the kids ideas we act them out although this raised many suspicions as in their interview with Keemstar that state that the videos were exaggerated but real are these videos a hundred percent real I mean is is it a hundred percent real or are you guys putting on a show like McJugger Nuggets or kid behind the camera the videos were not fake but some things are a little exaggerated this discrepancy led daddy05 to be interviewed on Good Morning America, where the legitimacy of the videos was put into question on national television. You're not suggesting that your kids and the crying and the sobbing and that emotion we see was not real, are you? Um, not every single time. Some of it was 
acted. Now that there were even more eyes on the family, Daddy05 would upload a more polished second apology in which they would state that they were now in family counselling. We are now in family counselling because we need it. Um, not only to get through the you know media stuff but we we need it to come back together and have everybody even the kids to understand what we did wrong this has been the absolute worst week of our life and we realized that we have made some terrible parenting decisions well, the question is are, are they really sorry Hold on, let me though the right. worst was certainly are they really sorry about how much they've done to these children because obviously if they were really remorseful they would just stop entirely you know they would just be like oh okay we're wrong we're gonna stop but i'm assuming if if nobody were to say anything if nobody if philip defranco never made that video if they never got on the news if people weren't dislike bombing the video they they would just continue doing this stuff they they would just because it's money money just give me my money. Just give me my money. Give me my money. Okay. Um. Sorry. I, I might have still yet to come. Only 10 days after having interviewed Daddy05 for their previous bit of controversy, Keemstar would upload a new video titled Daddy05 Might Be Arrested, in which he explained that the police were now attempting to investigate the parents. More information has come out about the Daddy05 situation. Apparently, the police are investigating them. An article came out saying that the Baltimore County Police Department were investigating, but they were having a hard time finding the videos and understanding which counties that these crimes took place in. Yet it wasn't only the police who were investigating Daddy 05 after it was revealed that the courts were also looking into the family. The biological mother of both Cody and Emma used the media attention to claim emergency custody back over her two children, meaning that they were now out of Mike and Heather's family. Emma and Cody are with me. I have emergency custody. They're doing good. They're getting back to their playful selves. Four months later in September 2017, an article will be published by Good Housekeeping titled Update YouTube Pranking Parents Sentenced for Child Neglect in which it was written YouTube channel Daddy05 have been sentenced to five years probation for two counts of child neglect each. Also, any social media postings of the kids is prohibited unless it is for legitimate family purposes. However, by this point, the drama was already in the past and the family minus Cody and Emma were back to posting videos under the slightly altered name Family05. Yet, this didn't sit well with YouTube and in July 2018, their channel Family05 will be terminated permanently. In a state of panic, the family would launch their own website on which they'd post vlogs behind a $5 per month payment wall, yet after only six- About that, about that payment wall, right? About the payment wall. Who was realistically going to buy $5 of Daddy05 content? $5 worth of any of their content in general, right? Because realistically, so most, most of the YouTubers, most- of YouTube's viewers are children, right? Do children have money? Do children have access to um, debit and credit cards, like pet, like at the age of ten, right? And then the other group of people who are watching family content are like wine moms who also have children, right? Um, and what are they gonna do once their favorite family channel is gone? They're gonna play with their actual kids, so. I don't know. I feel like th this was just dumb on their part. Like it, it was like, oh, we have so much YouTube clout, but then they they forget their target demographic, children, you know, and people who don't care enough to purchase this. I don't know if they were like offering something, maybe like meetups or maybe it was like a convention or something. But I don't know. Again, it would still be children. So I think it'd be the same result either way. You know, I think they were just kind of doomed from the start once people realized that, yo, what they're doing is kind of fucked up. Oh, excuse me. Like, the, the, these people are weird. Very strange. Where's my mouse? Okay. Okay. This is where I put the, 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 um, the outro.